Hello. Hey. We are live. We're live, people. <coughs> oh dear. You know, guess what, guys? It's Thursday, and we are happy to welcome you all to the Afro Parenting Village Discussion Thursday Live. Okay, we we're, in, we're, we're in, we're in, we're in. We alive. So, guys. Welcome, the first couple of people are joining, and we just want to say welcome, Akwaba, Karibu, to all of you guys, as you're about to dive into today, in today's topic. We have an interesting one for you, and we have Ja, the creator, joining and sharing his thoughts and his opinions on some of these. And guys, we want you guys to jump in too, so don't be shy, don't be afraid. It's a village we're here to share, to excel, and to empower each other on this journey of friendship, relationships, parenting, and everything in between. Guys, if you don't know who I am, I am Akol Richardson, one half of the Afro Parenting Village founders, with my other half. It's only me, <laughs> His other half, Abner Richardson. Guys, we are here today, as Michael said. That was a great introduction, and you know what? This guy needs no further introductions. Hey, Ghana Brown, just saying hi on hey. Point Property. Real estate. Oh, we have a lot of real estate people in the house today. We are building. We are, we are building. building. We are building. We've got, we've got Chen Tai, Java Creator. Listen, guys, we can't wait to delve into this one. So, without further ado. Yeah, we're just going to share a few words about what the Afro Parenting Village and Destination Africa is all about. So, what is the Afro Parenting Village all about? Guys, you know what? For many of us, we fell into parenting, you know. For once, we were young children in African homes. Don't look at that girl. Do not talk about these things. Yes. And all of a sudden, you're a child. Just focus on your books. And then all of a sudden, you know, you turn 25, and then you, you go into the room and you see your mom's crying. You're like, oh, mom, why are you crying? You're like, oh. <laughs> 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 And you're there trying to console her and say, hey, Mommy, you know, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. What's the problem? What's the problem? Oh, my nan and mom! <laughs> my grandchildren! I don't have any! And the, and the day before, it was like, You study, don't look at women, don't look at girls, don't look at boys, donkeys, study your boots. And you know, for a lot of us, we didn't really get much preparation for it. But we're here now, and we're just supposed to, you know, put the plasters on and say it's all okay. But you know what? Guess what? It's fine for it not to be all okay. So that's what the Afro Parenting Village is all about, creating a safe space for parents to be empowered to build the learners of today and the leaders of tomorrow. And we do that through conversations, discussions, fun, bonding times, tips, hacks, and so much more. So guys, if you haven't already, join the Afro Parenting Village's WhatsApp group. We have over 570 members on it. Yes, 570. And each and every day, we go into a different realm of parenting. It's not just those with children. We take it from an African perspective. So if you, if you don't have children, you are an uncle, an auntie, to someone else and you can impact their life almost just as much as their parents. So guys, make sure if you haven't, join the Afro Parenting Village. Link is in our bio for a bit more. So, hmm, that's that. I think I think we're ready. I, I think we're ready for Jar the Creator. We are ready for Jar the Creator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm ready, I'm ready. So today's subject is all about single fatherhood challenges okay so single fatherhood challenges hey, it's not easy being a, a father you know what i think sometimes men get the the, the, the tough stick of the, the tough side of the draw you know we draw the short straw at times but you know before i end up you know holding there's something in my back there's a knife in my back if he's yeah, sitting next to me before to those guys up. start stabbing me in the back i'm going to introduce today's guest he goes by the name of Jar the Creator. And I want him to join our session. So I'm about to hit that join button for us, Jar, and we would bring you in. So, Abner, hmm. a few words whilst we wait for Jar to hit the join button. You know, it's really funny because today we're going to be talking about fatherhood, mm -hmm. but parenting in itself, African homes, we, they just, I don't know about you, but I really didn't have that much preparation growing up. And all you knew was that there were you had friends and they had parents, but then not much was shared in, in regards to how they were prepared 
to become parents mm. and how their mothers prepared their daughters and you know, prepared their sons and whatnot. Uh -huh. So it's really interesting looking at, you know, is she the suitable one and blah, blah. Mm -hmm. How much thought is really put into your future, you know, your, your future, the future mother of your children or the yeah. future father of your children mm -hmm. and how, you know, that relates to the generational example that you that you set exactly. for those children. Exactly. That's the question for you both. So, right. well, you know, don't worry, without further ado, we have the man up for the <laughs> But you guys. <laughs> Hey, Akwaba, Karimu, and welcome to the Afro Parenting Village live stream on this Thursday. Guys, you know what? We're excited to get into the conversation, but, you know, we, we have to do it justice. How, how's your day been so far? Um, yeah, my day's day been good. It's, um, it's, oh, it's been raining, to be fair. Obviously, I'm in the UK, so, um, but yeah, but yeah, it's been good so far. Yeah. 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 Cool. It's the same over here. That's why I had my mouth open. It's been raining cats and dogs over here. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're twinning at the minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you guys have got yeah. the rain with the, the heat. So, it's still kind of, it's like rain, but it's not really rain like yeah. here where it's raining. Yeah. Cold, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's that tropical rain. But trust me, when you get caught in it, hmm, we got yeah. caught in it today. It's shower. It's nice. <laughs> <Isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jal, so give us. Grand, we've, we've tried to do it justice mm -hmm. and um, given a bit of a background information about yourself, but come on, give us a grand, you know, introduction of who Jar the Creator is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, overall, I would say I'm a digital creator. Um, I create content, but mainly I do logo design and branding. That's my main thing. So, like websites, um, logos as well um it could be event material that you know really more or less like that kind of design stuff and then i've also got a youtube channel called convo nation and um we've got a couple of shows in there and stuff like that as well and yeah that's just basically it really i'm more of a creative kind of person i'm always trying to create something or find a solution to some kind of problem but but yeah that's me oh and I love it. He's a talented guy. Yeah. Um, just... well, and I've got to ask, like, did you go to university to study that? Yeah, you can kind of say I, I did. Um, I, I, it's, it's I, don't weird because... I, don't, I don't need any more. I don't want you to go to university. <laughs> <laughs> but that is my guy, you he know. He went to the university. Hey. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't go to the university. <laughs> coming off right now to give you some lashes. You'll be going back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, wow, no. That is a really... I mean, it's a talent and it's something that's so timely. Like, it's needed for the day. So you're in the right profession great industry and we love what you do absolutely love what you do hence why we, we have you here today so today today we're going to be talking about fatherhood and something that i mean it makes up one half of what uh the future of our children are going to become you know generationally you play such an important role and the reason why we felt it important to have this conversation or this discussion today is because black fathers especially I find sometimes your roles are a bit skewed, um, sometimes because of the preparation that's not necessarily there, or there's an attack from society, from the media, where you just don't, you're not represented the way that you should be, even though there's a lot of you doing really good work with our children, mentoring other people's children in society, you name it. So I guess our first question would be, Give us your family background. Like, was there preparation for you in terms of becoming a father? Uh, um, what, so in terms of what they did for me or just in terms of just how I grew up in that, in that, in that sort of household? I think both. Like, what you saw direct, consciously and subconsciously, did, was there, yeah. I think, I think for me, it's weird because obviously, although UK... I grew up in a fully Ghanaian household, um, as you guys know already. You know, yeah. before I'm allowed to play outside with my friends, I have to clean and have chores. You know, what I was there, so it weren't. I wasn't coming out and just throwing on my, you know, my tracksuit. And it was like, you know, I had to get up in the morning. I would say from like say half five, six. Then it's prayer. After prayer, um, you know, I would have to 
get my little brother's school uniform that's been stuffed ready, bath, wait for them to wake up because I had to wake up early before them and obviously. So I guess growing up like that, one thing that built into me was routine and structure. Yeah. You know, so getting up in the morning, I realised it's easier to complete the day. Mm -hmm. Whereas, um, and also I feel like rising up with the sun and obviously, you know, going back down with the sun when it's setting is a good thing naturally, mentally and spiritually, I think, as a person, naturally, especially for a man, because, you know, we're the first ones out to go and, you know, get the bread or work if we're doing it like a normal family structure or household or traditional household. So um, I think for me, seeing that dynamic between my mum and dad, it really made it imperative to me. Yeah. But, and I would say, I, it's weird because, again, like you were saying um, earlier, Michael, you know, with the way African parents can be sometimes, it's like they don't really, they always kind of fear back to you first. So it's like, don't speak to that person, don't do this and don't. So a lot of my experiences came from just living them or living through other people's experiences because I was so scared to do certain things. Do you see what I'm coming from? So, you know, but I think it was good to, to understand duty. So my dad would always get up, go work. Uh, um, you know, he might have, let's just say, um, he might have told me the next day, okay, this is what we're going to be doing. And uh, you need to be home and whatnot. With my mum as well, especially, she used to always say to me, look, look don't wait for um, uh, a woman. You shouldn't rely on a woman to come and cook and clean for you. Cooking is actually a life school you should know. As a man, you should know how to feed yourself. And I found out later on in life, obviously, as I got older, that it's weird because in some cultures, the men don't do that at all. Like, they don't actually. But I felt like my mum was just preparing me naturally just to be independent. Do you see where I'm coming from? Because yeah, yeah, obviously totally. she knows, yeah, it, do you see where I'm coming from? So, yeah, so those kind of influences. And obviously the culture as well, going back like once every year from the age of seven, um, just seeing how... You know, like the way Ghanaian women work hard, and the way the Ghanaian men obviously support that system. But just, in, just imagining, I think for me it was imagining like how that would work over there versus over here. Over here is quite different. If you see where I'm coming from, whereas over there they still run off cultural values from you know how many thousands of years ago. So yeah, but I guess those are more mainly the examples. I would see duty, structure, uh, responsibility as well. I had to take care of my my two younger brothers. I'm the first-born son, but I've got an older sister. So, um, you know, making sure that they've got their key, I've got my keys, their book bag, that I've got my book bag. If they haven't got theirs, then, you know, I'm, <laughs> it's, I'm in trouble. You get me? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, literally, literally, you know. So, but that, that again, responsibility. So I feel like it, it was easier for me to kind of navigate into the world when I got to like say 15, 16 when it came to finding a job and whatnot because I was already doing things that required me to have those skills you know so yeah I was that's what kind of prepared me to be fair oh cool cool you know and it's funny you say that because I can definitely relate I remember going to school probably secondary I was about 12 years old and we got into a conversation about ironing and like you know who irons and washes your clothes and tidies up your bedroom and you know some of the, some of the children in school especially the white ones in particular mum would tidy up their bedroom mum would wash their clothes yep. you know up yep. in the drawers fold it and put it back in the drawer and I remember I was looking at them like wow <laughs> <laughs> because they get all of that cleaning cooking doing the shopping everything so you know what it, it does definitely prepare you for, for a specific element of life. So, you know, um, I want to I wanna build on that question a bit. So, you know, you got that foundation. You got, they showed you the things and gave you responsibilities from young. Moving forward, that shift between, you know what, don't look at girls. You know, your eyes should be dead on your books. Fall in love with your books. Between there and being an adult and now, you know, engaging women and so on, what was that sort of transition like? Um, boy, I don't think there was even a transition. I don't know, you know, where I started. But all I know is that I started and I went the complete opposite way to what my mum and that were saying. Um, 
They're literally like, because again, I could tell you not to go down that road because I don't know. I could just tell you after school, but you're going to ask me why at some point. Mm -hmm. But because of the fear of questioning your parents, asking the one big thing, it's like you're talking back. So it shuts down that curiosity. So what happens is that you can't learn from that situation. So I kept going into situations, for example, um, like, like my mum would say, focus on your books. Which ones? <laughs> <laughs> Which ones? Hey, you know, he, he, he's one of those children, eh? <laughs> you, why are you asking questions? Don't yes, ask that's questions. it. Do what I say. It's better to be obedient. Exactly. You know, exactly. For what? Yes. And I'm like, obedience is better than to sacrifice. That's that one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, and I used to sit there, and think to myself, "All right, cool. Well, what's the next step?" And I think they just thought, "Okay, you're we're in Britain. Um, you're gonna. It's this system set up for you to win. So naturally, you know." everything's going to be fine. So they, they sort of sat back at the same time. So I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to school and back. I could be changing them. Yeah, I'm going to my friend's house quickly just to do some revising, but we're not going there to play, I don't know, um, whatever game was that, Super Mario at the time, yeah. Nintendo, or, you know, or I'm just gallivanting in the area, just meeting people and whatnot. And I think being early taught me a lot in terms of transitioning. So, for example, um, like, I remember the pressure of just even you know, everyone's leaving school and it's like everyone's got their NI number now so now they've all got to go and get a job yeah. and the pressure of just like you know your friends have all got jobs now summertime's coming it's June everyone's all got something lined up July comes and you still ain't got a job and you're thinking right what am I going to do you know like it's July all my friends are so that pressure on me already was just like okay I've got to get a job I've got to transition quickly and I think um, just learning from other people as well. I had a lot of older people around me. So I would see a lot of my friends, especially my male friends, they have moved out from an earlier age. So from 16, they had a council house. Um, and basically, you could kind of see with their independence there, like how they had to, you know, put money aside. Obviously, they couldn't work a certain amount of hours because they were still getting help. But if they did, they would have to pay rent. And um, yeah, man, I would say, it was it was tough, but it was needed, you know. For boys or for men, it's hard to that for that transition because there's so much expectations on you, mm. you know. And while working, I was at university and I was at college as well. So just meeting people, um, trying to figure out what actual real friends are, you know, and just identifying that and trying to keep them because I feel like a lot of us struggle with even just having a good friend unit or family unit outside of just you know, blood related family members and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that, that's, that's insightful. So, you know, fast forward a little bit. You know, um, we have, it's, it's, uh, you have a son, right? Son, yeah. I've got a son. Yeah. 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 So, fast forward him, you know, what was it like that moment when you saw, you heard him play that voice for the first time? What, what was that moment like? Um, I mean, I could take even, a little bit further back to when I found out, you know, he was coming into this world. I mean, I'll talk to him every day. Sorry, do you know what? Because I'm, yeah. I'm so curious when it comes to you guys. There's, there's certain things that where the dots don't quite connect. So I am, this is such an intriguing topic for me. Mm -hmm. So you guys have spoken a lot about action and what you saw your dads do, what you saw your mums do, and you just learned from that. Was there ever a time that your dad sat down with you and said, if you're looking for a future, not even a future wife, like a future mother of your child, these mm. are the things that you should be looking for. Or did you guys mainly learn and acquire the knowledge from just what you saw? Well, hey, that one, that conversation, that, that the father's hey, never well. this one. I want to, I want to know. He's throwing the dynamite at, at us all. Please, if, if you like the dynamite, the reason why I'm asking this, and both of you, mm. is because I asked the question about, um, you know, when you, from the time you were doing, study your books, 
And Jesse being the two known one, he's like, which one? You know, he, he had all the answers, right? <laughs> so when the girls came and he could see what he liked and he just went and he picked one. But was there ever a point where you thought, if this one was supposed to be, thank you for the fire, whoever gave you the fire, thanks, thanks. So yeah, so was there ever a point where you, thought, <laughs> where you were thinking, you know, like, yeah, I like you know this, what? but... Uh -huh. I feel like, um, sorry to cut you. I feel like it's yeah. it's so funny because I was having this conversation. That's why I'm laughing a lot with my dad the other day. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, he was talking about just relationships in general, and obviously how you know society over here it complicates things and makes them wanna, you know, it's not really built for relationships. So anyway, we was talking, and I, and I just said to him, "Why didn't you ever have that conversation with me?" And he was just like, he just said he didn't. He didn't see the need because in his head he thought that the school would teach me how to do it or you know like i would just learn because naturally yeah. but yeah but the truth is because i'm looking at him you know explaining so i'm like nah, nah nah that's not the truth the truth is you're scared that's <laughs> it that's you it and that's scared. the level of in yeah. our communities mm -hmm. yes let's just call it what it is you don't want yeah no scared he was scared to broach, to broach a subject he probably literally I, I said i said to him, look yeah. out of all the uh, times you wake up in the morning and pray all the jesus holy flame you're scared of me you look the sun but it's not you know like it, it's i don't understand that but what it showed was they were scared to i because remember they're adults so i don't know how they learn that probably still be a mystery or conspiracy to this day but they learn and then i think from that upbringing coming over to here they didn't know how to communicate that to a child so or they didn't want to i would say i personally will go for the aspect of they didn't want to because again you know it requires them to be uncomfortable because now you're gonna have to talk about things that i don't know do you think it was a case that they, maybe they didn't know because uh, and the reason i say that is because you know it's like Sometimes, in order to teach, you must under you must understand. Does that make sense? Like, don't get me wrong; it will go through in some shape or form. But you know, even sometimes, like in places like Ghana, Nigeria, these places, things happen. A lot of things just happen, yeah. and sometimes they don't know the why why things are happening, and can't fully explain it in such a way that would be you know quantifiable. Because then you start asking more questions. It's like, okay, go study your books. You know, like, okay, which one? And then it's like. You need to know what books the person needs to study to advance yeah. that makes. So I'm not getting wrong. Yeah, everyone knows the birds and the bees and, and how to uh, how to procreate. But even broaching that subject in the way that is palatable at particular ages and stages is a challenge. And it sometimes it takes skill or understanding or um, exposure to be able to to deal with it. And especially once you've been uplifted out of maybe your homeland and the culture you grew up in to now a foreign one, which is talking about some different ideals it, it, it may you see, it's very it's very interesting what you're saying yeah, because drop in the comments but sorry yeah, it was cutting out sorry mm. yeah no that's cool sorry um it's very interesting what you're saying because as you're saying it now in my head i'm thinking to myself what was the actual idea or plan in terms of like raising your child in this country versus the different cultures and i think with them with our, our parents, they never really had no as aspect of time. It was like, okay, you're 15 now. You should be doing this X, Y, and Z. Okay, you're 18 now. You, they didn't look at it to say, oh, he's 15 now. He might be going through some changes or whatever. He might want to actually... And I think this is why I believe they kind of ran away from it because obviously they had expectations. So when I didn't get it right, it was like, no, you're supposed to do, 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 do. But I'm like, yeah, but how did you enforce that? You know, you can't expect yeah. Sunday school to teach. Even with them, they're not going to teach you. Um, and this is not a disrespect to anyone's, you know, Sunday schools. But from when I was growing up, it was very light. It was very soft. It was very, it wasn't real down to it earth. It was nice and fluffy. It was nice and what, sir? Fluffy. Fluffy, yeah, fluffy, yeah. Nice and fluffy, like, literally. So I, for me, it was like, I wasn't going to get that from my parents. But funny enough, I got it from other parents that who were 
a less a lot more kind of inclined to have them kind of conversations just based upon how they've grown up so um, i don't know if you guys i'm going to show my age here i don't know if you guys remember connections connections <laughs> mm -hmm. way people? back in the days <clears throat> Connections, uh, was it a TV program? No, 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 no. So Connections was, um, they were like how you would go to read or just for jobs. Like, they will basically help young people in transitioning oh, into like... When you turn 16. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. Uh, and it, yeah, 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 yeah. So but it was, when I, obviously for me, they were, they were the kind of go-to people because again, you know, you're young and obviously you are innocent to an extent, but at the same time, you're not really too sure. So I think when it came to picking, you know, that direction, I would always go to them. So that kind of helped me later on in life. I think my dad, nah, they never really planned or sat down. Only when I got things wrong, I would say. And even then, <laughs> even up until now, it's like, they could, we, like, we had the conversation the other day and he was saying, you know what, it would have been nice for you guys to, you know, all settle down and have, you know, a particular type of woman, preferably Ghanaian and whatnot. I said, yeah, but you lot didn't put this in place. So mm -hmm. in our eyes, we're walking around and we're in London. We're not only just seeing Ghanaian girls, we're seeing, you know, Caribbeans, we're seeing Asians, whites as well. Um, in my area in South London, it was always African and Caribbean. It was just, that's just it. But... Yeah. I know as you get to work full time, you start to see different races. So even interacting with them based on our cultures was kind of difficult. So I had to look through other people's experiences. I had a lot of older cousins uh, who made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> so I was able to kind of say, okay, I'm not doing that there. And I'm not doing that as well. So, you know, I, again, it didn't, it, it, it gave me the, um, it gave me a better experience, although it was tougher because now there's no sugar coating. Do you see where I'm coming from? So um, my older, my friend's older brother would tell me, look, this is how you get a girl. Or this is how you know if a girl likes you, you know. Or um, listen, if you're going to take a girl out on a date, you, know, you smell nice, you know, you've got to get your hair cut. You've got to make sure you're looking sharp, put your best. So even with all of that, I learned that from my friend's older brother. And I would see him, because um, they're quite a lot older. So when they used to go out raving, they used to wear suits and all proper, like, full of like, shoes and everything, you know? <laughs> Do you get me? So it's like... They were the real deal. But yeah, you know what? Sorry, let me let me just finish, then I will say something. No, no, that's cool. It's cool. Go, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I, I was, okay. That's basically... Mm. Right, okay. You know what? I am so glad you had that conversation with your dad because it brings a certain amount, it's, it just brings a certain level of closure and accountability that even if he didn't get it right with you, he's going to try and kind of transcend that onto his grandchildren at least and you can get him involved in that aspect of their lives so to speak and it's really interesting because Ghanaian parents i don't think i mean guys please leave your comments in the comment section let me let us know what your experiences were so that you know we can really get into this discussion but um i don't think it would have made a difference if they were raised in ghana or they were they were raising their children in ghana or raising it in Cali, trust me because there's something about the way african parents are wired yeah, yeah. it's like oh Charlie. I think there's, they're made to be, they want to be seen as the parent, like the holy parent forever. And they never slept with another partner to, to, to have you arrive in this world. You, you, know, you came on the literally. stalk. Uh, you just came, you just it, uh, appeared. It was a miracle. Hey, it was a you magical know, door. You just came out and they, or they selected you inside of heaven and then they came back to earth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like let's keep it real there are other people like you were saying you know your your brother's friend or whatever that were out there saying when you want to meet a girl this is how you need to look and blah 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 and uh, you see somebody's laughing in the comment section <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but you know what these things are so fundamental because if we're, if we're not telling our children about this somebody else is actually raising our children and they are feeding them with what they feel is right and a lot of the times that's how like you say your cousins ended up making those mistakes and so on and so forth so it's really important and personally i've learned from it so there's nothing i don't discuss with my son i mean that a lot of the time as well children we underestimate them 
if we can explain something to them in a way whereby they can understand, it's amazing what those discussions will bring about and the closeness of the bond and, you know, you're, you're tailoring to every aspect of who that child is. But I think for a lot of our parents, they thought, oh, we have to feed them, we have to clothe them, we have to educate them. Everything else they can just sort of figure out on the way, which we did. And sometimes there were, you know, consequences for our choice. Yeah. 100%. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and so I just want to add to that very quickly. You know, and also it's something you mentioned about, you know, them not being about the stages. It made me think about rites of passage because, you know, most African parents are aware of rites of passage, especially, you know, birth rights and the puberty rights. Like they, they're aware of them. They know it's part of culture, you know, growing up in the village, small towns, like, you know, it's a celebration. It's, a, it's part of your coming of age. So it's not like it totally went over their heads, but it was almost like if I slightly closed my eyes to it, um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what they were expecting to be. But you know that coming of age, there was always an elder in the village who was going to sit the young boys down and say, "This is what's going to happen." Yeah. This is it was never their personal, yeah, responsibility. It's, 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 it's funny you guys are saying that, yeah. Um, sorry to cut you. It's, it just came to me just now. I was I can't remember who I was speaking to, yeah. but I couldn't yeah. remember. I, I couldn't try to remember exactly his name, but I can't remember. Anyway, we were talking. And he did say to me that, that at some point in Africa, I mean, we never grew up with the concept of a teenager. There was no right. such thing. So what it was is the rats of passage will start as early as like eleven or twelve, and then once they sort of complete that, then that was it. It was just into manhood. Yeah. And then when you look back at it, it kind of makes sense because I feel like the teenager concept was developed to sort of control that transition, block yeah. obviously things they want to take. You know the ones they're like. So when you're in that position, that's why you're seeing the child in so much anxiety and stress because obviously for them it's like, how do I transition naturally? You know. But yeah, I just thought I'd add to that because I'll, I'll, when you were saying that, I was just thinking about it in my head. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no, definitely. I'm, we're glad to hear your thoughts. And also, I think like. With African parents, they allow parenting to happen to them. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, okay, Kofi, we're going to sit down and plan. You know, how are we going to get Jesse from A to B? What happens when he gets to this place? Let's just plan his journey. Mm -hmm. that, you know, he'll get to 15 and you hear, oh, you know, he likes girls. I saw him. <laughs> I heard him. On the <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, Charlie, were you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the other side will be like, hmm, baby, he's, he's not. He's saying, oh, yeah. are you studying? You know, yes. you see, he's, he's studying. studying. You say yes. <laughs> and so, you know, the only thing you would hear is, don't bring that to my door. Don't bring it to my door. Yeah. And it's like, there's a whole transition between that and, you know, don't bring that to my door. So, I, I thank you guys so much for clearing that up because now, at least as a guy, I wasn't raised as a guy in a home, you know, thank God. But yeah. <laughs> thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so we are moving on. So, you know, Jess, like the mother of your child now, having had all the different influences and everything that you had, how then did it come to be that you are now having a mother of your child? Was, it, was she somebody that you thought would be a good mother? Or did you even have... Did you have anything in your mind? Yeah, just before you answer the question, I want to yeah. quickly jump to some of the comments because I'm sure. almost here for a bit. Yeah. Um, Black Jen said he was not taught, so probably he didn't possibly. know, so, or possibly he didn't know how to bring that combo. So I think that's in regard to parents, um, you know, teaching their children about, you know, sexual interaction or relationships and so on. Um, Home Educator 23 says, community support with the likes of housing and jobs, etc. I think it was 18 and under. So, yeah, connections mm -hmm. she was referring to. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Oh, man, all the waves. This is great, guys. It's, it's great to have you here. Oh, somebody wants to know, what lyrics did the young girls like? Hey, Chale, now we're really taking it back. <laughs> <laughs> I call her Bonnie. This one, someone is trying to learn game on this live. I'm telling you. Uh, but, but remember, that game is old. Very old. Old game. We have a game. Our game is ancient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, we had Queen Duncan, 21, who said, it's true. 
and laugh it, laughing out loud. We had Paul Draken, who says, African parents then knew that. Don't bring a girl Your here. Yeah. And later on, when you are getting when married, are you? so when are you getting married? But they didn't know how to balance the years between that teenage. for a teenage boy, which is so true. It's just yeah. that, that in between ground, that transition from child to, to man is um, what was definitely a challenge. Mm. Wow. So, guys, I'm going to hand back over to you, Jar, to answer the question that I've posed. And I will get back to some of the comments. Yeah. So, what was the question again? Sorry. Um, the question was, yeah, did you have, did you even know or have an idea in your mind about what the mother of your child was, or did you just connect with somebody and you thought, Let, let's just see how this goes? Yeah, like you don't really, it's weird because, again, like I said, I can only go by how I've learned. So, I've always learned that it's about connection and just obviously energy and stuff like that. So, when you're in a long term relationship and you're with somebody, um, you know, if a child comes, sometimes you, know, you can panic because, again, you know, in your head, for a man, I've been told to have everything in order, like, like down to a T. So, you know, when you're in a position in life where things are not all in order, and it's sometimes it can be the smallest things. It could just be like, I don't know, like um, you haven't got like, I don't know, let's say a bigger place, or it could just be something like you're in transitioning from jobs or whatever could be anything or you, you, your car's too small and in your mind you're thinking oh my god i'm not ready to... but i think what worked um <clears throat> between me and my, and my son's mom was obviously at the time was that there was a lot of love there so mm -hmm. i would come home from work and i'm always talking to my son inside the stomach all the time always rubbing it always and i and obviously chemically women release oxytocin naturally that's that's the chemical that's the bonding chemical but when they're pregnant with um, their spouse's child together, both men and women release at the same time. So the child feels that. That's why they say when a child's born, you know, they, they always do a whole, you know, um, I can't remember the terminology for it, for the child to feed, but they always go straight to that. And with the men, they always say, make the child sleep on your chest because... Bond with you. Right. It's going to remember the oxytocin it had from before it came out. So that's, that's the bond, you know. So essentially, um, that's what we had. So I think... For me, and obviously we we agreed to have a home birth, so which was slightly different, and that's for completely different reasons. But I think we, I don't know if we've got enough time to get into that. But yeah, <laughs> but we've got a home birth in Safer. Yeah. So we get it. We get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Now you know what that is really interesting. So there was double the love, double the oxytocin, double the bonding. If your son came to you now and said. You know, like, I guess not even for him to ask the question, because now we realize that we have a responsibility to be talking to our, our sons, especially about choosing a mother for their child. What would you tell your son? Hey, Dad. Hey, please, please, no? you give us some fire in the chat. She loves to make it hot. You know what, Paul, Paul Drake, when you find out what the lyrics were, now, now we've got lyrics for you. That's it. The lyrics. <laughs> Listen, I'll be telling my son, um, just observe women, be around them, older women especially, so you get to learn how the younger ones are. Because you understand the root or the tree they've come from. Also, um, learn how they love, because again, for men it's different. Um, also understand that they, you have to understand them who they are as an emotional creatures and what their purpose is because when you're able to identify that then you'll be able to sort of identify the nonsense that comes with it because again not every woman is right not every woman is um the one sometimes there's you're just going to have experiences and they're, they're going to happen so there's nothing wrong with that um i'll definitely create a space for me and to have an actual you know all bars like no restrictions conversation on that because i feel like men naturally haven't got that space anyway so you know when it comes to a woman most men look for their mother or whatever role model they had maybe the older sister or whatever in their life and unfortunately not all cases but in some cases that person could have been toxic so 
for my son, I think it's important for me to have an area where he can come and say, oh, dad, you know what, like, yeah, there's this girl and da 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 and I'll be able to have a conversation about it, you know? I think that's probably, I would definitely be telling him to look at, look at the girl's mother as well. That's very important because you're going to understand who you're marrying, you know? So, um, and yeah, I think that's about it, really. And well, there's other stuff as well, like dating, you know, if you want to know, you know, Oh, there's certain little tips in there, but I can't give it all out, you know. But it's always, oh, like, you know, wow. wait, wait, wait. You know I, mean? I can't give out all the tricks. And, you know I mean? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm on, I'm on Instagram live, you know. I don't want to get me. I don't want to, you know, let, let the man them down. The man them are already. They're like, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to break the internet, guys. Give him some fire in the chat. It's the okay. <laughs> love It's the Afro Parenting Village having a conversation about single fatherhood with Jar the Creator, guys. If you haven't already, take a moment to follow him on Instagram. And if you haven't followed us, what are you waiting for? So, guys, you know, I'm I'm, I'm going to build on from that question. So, you you spoke about dating. You know, as the as the African father. Eh? You are the African father. Would you allow your children to date? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. You have broken the... Yeah, listen. You're, you're, you, are, you are broken the rules. Yeah, yeah, what bro what African what father. Jesse, listen. You go to school. You get your degree. Uh, then you uh, marry. Uh, 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 before that, uh -huh. you go to school. Uh -huh. Books. Then you marry. No, no, no. Go oh, to sorry. school. Uh -huh. Boost. What, what game? The next game. The next what game? game? What game is that? That one is. You, in, in that case, the date. It is the game of their life. Is, is that AI? Yeah. Is that AI? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. That one. Hey, hey. That's right. That's right. <laughs> when you're born in an African home and you think you are doing right. When you see the lights, you just read your books and at night. <laughs> Where's he going? Where are you? Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, that's right. Listen. Okay, seriously. So the dating scene, why is it necessary for your son to date? Because you need to, you need to be bonded with the opposite sex. In real time, yeah, we don't, no longer have the playground or the moments where you walk a girl home from the bus stop, or you're in the youth club, and or there's a family barbecue. Everything now is AI, internet, this, everything that is. So dating still allows you to go out in person, and you know, take a girl out to a bar or a restaurant, or maybe um, you can go in a cinema. I wouldn't recommend cinema because obviously you can't really talk, but somewhere nice in the, in the space where you can communicate in person it builds self-confidence it also teaches him about personas because you need to read energy you need to feel the other person you know what are they really about and i always tell him, I, I will tell him always look them directly in their eyes because when you're talking to them that's how you're able to read if someone's actually sincere not all the time there's some good poker faces there but still the majority dating is very important for them so yeah no i so that's you're saying that's the opportunity to really feel out and get to understand the person that you're dealing with. And I think initially you also said, you know, understand the root and the tree of that person. So all of these are very much African ideals whereby, you know, you, you kind of, you vet the person, you vet their parents, you vet their, their moral systems, their beliefs, their energy, the, the frequency, you know, their vibrations and, and all of those things that are going to make, um, a solid foundation for the relationship that you're going to be raising this child in. So I get it. I get the dating part. And it, it seems as though we've gone a step further from our African parents who said, don't date, just marry, and, and that's that. And we've seen the consequences of those as well. You know, you yeah. go to Africa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've been married for 30 years. Nobody's talking to each other. The whole environment is just toxic. Like you walk in the room and you can just feel it. You can smell it. And it's just really sad. So... It feels like that's an evolution. Like we've we've evolved from that. Yeah. So, so, so oh, I, I was going to add something to that. You know, like I think sometimes, as you mentioned it, what came to mind was that that thing where people wanted to marry. So you know, in in that oh, in African culture, you would approach the family. You're telling them you're interested. You do what they call the knocking, that first knocking, where 
someone will go to the family and say, oh, you know what, I'm interested in a lady from this house and whatever. And they'll tell you, okay, um, go away and come back on a set day, maybe a couple of weeks later and so on. And that family where the household of the young lady that you're looking to marry would run in the background and do some research. They'll be making phone calls. They'll be finding out, you know, your public standing of the family, not just you, your whole family, your dad, your mum, your uncles, your aunties, you know, whether there's drunkards in the families, whether you guys pay your debts or not, you know, whether there's illnesses, hereditary illnesses in the family, yeah. there'll be all that background. And when you come back two weeks later and you knock and then, you know, they, they, they've checked you out and everything, then you get to that next step of, okay, they may accept or your offer or not, but in the background, they're talking to their daughter to find out, you know, and not the advisor now, would, do you want to marry this guy? Because once you leave our house, you're going to join his house and his family. This, the person, it's not this, you know, eros love of me and you, hearts and cupid. You're marrying a family, you're marrying a mother, you're marrying a father, you're marrying the brothers who ain't married, but you, you may be cooking for them as well, X, Y, and Z, you may be in a compound house and all, all that. So as you're speaking, all these things sort of came to mind. But as you're saying, it's evolved, it's a different space. Now we're nuclear families, now we've got internet and AI and, and all sorts. So, uh, you, you know, like you said, that evolution has to happen. But then the conversation, the, the bridge between where we were, were and where we are now also needs to happen. And, well. and, that's, and that's just to add to that, um, that's what you want to beat. You want to beat the internet and the AI. I mean, it's going to be quite hard to beat them, to be fair. You're going to lose some challenges. But if you're able to explain that information first before your son sees something online, then it just it, it, it helps him dis like decipher what's right. Because sometimes online, as you know already, it's very easy to slip into the wrong realms or to the wrong road. So you want to kind of be present so you can, uh, you know, at least bring an opposition into what's going on, to what he's experiencing. Mm. So, yeah. No, definitely. Wow. So, um, moving on, fatherhood. It's interesting. When we looked at the etymology of the word, now we're going to get into the nooks, the, the proper nooks and crannies of this word, and it's going to get serious. So um, we looked into the etymology of child of fatherhood, and um, in in the, in our language, it actually meant fire um, or somebody who is who builds a fire around you. Yeah, who builds a fire around you to protect you to ensure that there are no foreign objects or entities being able to come in to get to you. So you are that protector. You are also that defense. You are that provider. Um, and when we looked at it in the English, it was exactly the same thing, it, which was interesting because sometimes the etymologies don't always coincide. So I want, we wanted to find out what is fatherhood to you and what are some of the things that as you know, being raised in an African home, you're keeping and some of the things that you think you're going to try to improve on? Uh, um, fatherhood to me is duty. Um, it's a natural duty that I believe every man is born with this is how you learn to use it um you know everyone's got hands like, okay not everyone but most people are born with hands and it's how you go about your day versus what you do with your hands which is what's going to actually help you in the future so i feel like fatherhood is definitely in, in most in most uh, men i think for me providing um providence culture as well and protection is is fatherhood to me because again you you're the first you're the first sort of representation. You're on the front line for your actual family in general. If the police come to the door and it's two o'clock in the morning, it's most likely, in, in, well, it should be. I know nowadays it's different, but it's most likely the man should be getting to the door. And, you know, you're, that's the first person they're going to, whenever there's danger, think about it. Whenever there's danger, where's the father? Do you see where I'm coming from? That's the first question that people ask. Where's the father? So, yeah. um, for me, uh, um, that's what that's how I see fatherhood today. You know. Yeah. Um, no, what was the other question again? Um, what are some of the things that, as African parents, you're keeping, and, and things that you decided you're going to try to evolve on or change? You know. That one. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right. All right. So, as you know, we're Ghanaian. Yeah. And there are so many. Honestly, there's so many uh, myths and fear factors in our culture that I'm definitely not taking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving yeah. it right behind. Yeah, and we are yeah. here to learn. Touch on a couple of them for us. So, um, the whole aspect of just, um, you know, how can I explain it? 
So the whole fear factor of just not doing anything that you don't know. So that they might say to you, oh, you don't know where that person is. Don't eat at their house. Or yeah. not everything, you know, not everything has to be superstitious or spiritual. It could just be because of foolishness or human error or nonsense. So, for example, if, um, if I move into a, a new area and I meet people and greet people, I know that for my African parents, they'll be like, oh, you can't hug this person or you can't shake their hand and you can't. For me, if, as long as my energy is pure, that shouldn't be an issue. I'm going to be a lot yeah. more kind of forward in those sort of interactions, I think, personally. Um, also, yeah, I don't know if they're going to land for this one. This uh, culture of not questioning your parents, I'm definitely not doing that. I think for me, my son should be able to put me on the stand like I'm in a courtroom and grill me, ask questions, judge me even if he has to, because how is he ever going to learn, you know? I'm, I'm here for him to make, for him to learn from my mistakes. So if I'm always acting like I'm the judge and executioner, then essentially I'm, not, I'm never taking accountability because my mistakes could be the reason why he's not progressing somewhere in his life, you know? Maybe at one point I had trauma that I didn't deal with. So definitely I'm not taking that um, with me. Um, and another one is, like, I would say the whole religious route and cultural route, I think for me, I'm a lot more embracing into people's natural nature and how they, how they maneuver, their personality, their thoughts. I think their thoughts and their processing is much more important than judging them by their religion. So, for example, I know some Ghanaians, they might be like, oh, she's gone in and she's a Christian. Uh, that's it. She's, she's certified. But that could be, that could be, you know, the devil himself, herself or himself, you know? Like, yeah. literally. But because they have that marker on them, it's like, oh, yeah, they're fine. Or because they're Ghanaian and you're Ghanaian and you're both in, I don't know, Germany, that, yeah, this Ghanaian could never do me no harm. That's silly. I think that's very silly. And I think as Africans, we need to change that. That's, we need to start looking at things from a logical standpoint keep the emotion there for the when it's needed but i think those things are the culture that's that's the stuff that i'm going to literally not bring with me i'm going to leave that away mm -hmm. um the stuff that will bring with me would be uh the aspect of respecting your elders as well um i think that's very important because a lot of these young kids they need to um you the, the whole structure of culture ritual routine so it could just be you know get up in the morning um, everyone on Sunday is going to cook at this person's house. Um, even just like culturally, like even in Ghana, like, like culturally things like, um, you know, walking, like you're going to walk to certain places a lot more than just driving. Um, some people can get water that's closer to them, but they choose to do the walk in the morning because it gives them peace of mind. Or it's, I feel like those sort of things I'm going to actually keep. Language as well. Language is very important. And, um, just the basic traditional values like your name, you know, naming a child after the day, knowing your actual tribe, their language system, their ancestors, who they were and whatnot. So, yeah, I think that's the stuff that I'm definitely going to keep uh, with you as well. That's powerful. Hey, that is powerful. If, if you're feeling what he said, drop a heart like fire hundred in the comments because you know oh, that, that yes, was touching that was very touching yeah. indeed i wasn't prepared for that one you should have warned us Jess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the health and the mindset warning yeah yeah and then loving it in the comment section as well but you know it's interesting that you said the fire is going up the hearts the hearts but no it's interesting that you said um the things that you would change everything that you mentioned had fear in like they all had so fear sweet. in common yeah. yeah and i think as a result of colonialism there's a lot of fear attached to why we did our parents did the things that they did mm -hmm. you know um i think the f i can't remember the first thing that you mentioned um the second thing was not questioning you so like being able your son being able to speak to you and being able to put you on the the stand that you're in a courtroom i think not only does that give him the opportunity to be able to receive certain answers for his questions but it also allows him to articulate how to 
um, question responsibly and reasonably, you know, because it's all communication, like sensible communication and good conversation. So yeah. when he's at a certain age and he demands certain answers, there's not going to be that fear of, oh, I can't ask the question. I can't, I can't, I can't, because that's what happens. And, you know, like the, the thing about when you go to auntie's house, don't eat. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> that was ne not necessarily spiritual. It was, you know, we can't eat here because when she comes to our house and we don't have enough, then we don't have much to give. And then the whole time we hear that we couldn't give the food back to her like she fed us when we went to her house. But they never quite explain things to you the way that it should be for the correct reason. Okay. Yeah. So then, you know, there's all that fear attack. So I think we as second generation where we weren't directly affected by colonialism, we, we don't have that fear. So we yeah. are very much more logical, we think about things and so on and so forth. So yeah, no, I love that. And it, it actually does align with a lot of our parenting, which is really nice. It, it's nice to know that we're going in similar directions. So I wanted to ask, um, parenting, what is stacked against fathers in this day and age, both from culture, women and, and media or society? um boy where do i even start right now there's a there's been i should say not even there's a there's been a war against men for the last 50 years i would say um and now every 10 years it evolves so first it was actually war mm -hmm. and uh, you know everyone was drafted at the age of i don't know 16 or whatever to fight in world war ii wherever it was if you were in the uk or usa um, even some in, in, in Ghana as well, you know, and other places. But I would say those um, war was a big thing. And now society and media has got this aspect of, you know, being independent from a man, um, not needing a man. There is a lot of um, pushback on that now. And obviously, as you can see, a lot of men are speaking up. But I think um, society as a whole has been a setback because essentially... Um, Okay, can I go deep? How deep can I go in this? Can I? Can I go? Guys, can he go deep? We don't do shallow here. Type in deep for me, please. All right, cool. So, um, there, there was a lady, um, don't quote me, so I could be wrong. Her name was Alice Bailey, yeah? I think she was part of the whole eugenics program, you know, them, them people. So, she's been in these cults or whatever for years. And her plan for the 20, 20th or 21st century was to obviously she had like a 10 point plan and one of the main things was to break the judeo christian family structure and how they were going to do it was obviously attack the gender separately so they had to create these false realities so for example um there was a aspect of um women you know believing they can have it all and you know after the war there was this attack on women being at home and you know, just doing what I would call what's in their creation role, you know, nurturing. It was like, no, you can't be a housemaid or a housewife. And that term, as you're hearing buzzwords now, was what was used to obviously break that mentality of women thinking, well, why do I want to stay at home when I can go outside and earn money and whatnot? So automatically, they broke that barrier in terms of, the because remember, when the mothers being at home, that's how the children were schooled, that's how they were fed. That's how they were kept in check because, again, it was what father had laid down and mothers agreed to. But you take the woman out of the home and now who raises the kids? So then now this is when schooling started to get put into place in terms of public schooling and whatnot. Um, all, these, all these aspects in this, in this lady's plan was there just to basically control the population and whatnot. So what they needed to do was, um, again, push this whole aspect of doing things by itself so now as, as, you, as you're seeing the result of it now now you have men getting one way women getting one way and now there's a whole gender you know it gets all crazy but the men have to do all this first so essentially if you get divorced from your wife naturally your wife will take half depending on how your marriage was set up but if you look at marriage now and with the laws in a lot of these western societies it's not really for the man you know what you know what I'm saying? there's no benefit i would say if you're doing it that way, obviously there is other ways you can do it. So the society as a whole, or the government as a whole, a lot of these things set men back. And I think the lack of understanding is the biggest thing because I can probably take on the world more times 
when I'm at work or with my boss. But if I'm coming home to my wife and she's not even even trying to understand it, then I've lost the main battle, really, because that's who I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for the family. So everything I'm doing outside is for the family. So to have two battles going on, that's that's a big setback. So, yeah, I would say that's these. those are the sort of three things that are, you know, against men or setbacks for fatherhood, I would say, today. That's so interesting. So, hmm, do you know what? I know time is against us. I have so much to, t- to say, you know. <laughs> um, but it's, it's so interesting how, because we lack understanding, we don't actually realise most decisions that we make are not for ourselves. We're not in and of ourselves. We don't own ourselves. From the time you get married, that marriage certificate means, like you were saying, when you divorce, yeah. you then have to pay somebody to get divorced or you have yeah. to have a birth certificate for child i mean yesterday i even found out that each and every single individual is a corporation and there's a certain amount of money that's expected to be made from you so if both parents are working outside of the home then that they're making money from that corporation and you know when you die you become a corpse so there's all of these things that we don't understand where we think that they're doing it for our benefit but then when you throw what around those buzzwords and then you start to fall victim to those buzzwords and you feel like oh no i can't be a housewife i mean when did when did a housewife even become a house that was just your natural call of duty you know was just to care for your children but now it's a derogatory word where you don't want to do that and so like you say what the, the man's gone one way the, the wife's gone the other way who's raising the children so you realize that nothing actually really belongs to us and they make a lot of decisions for us as fathers and as men what do we do about that? How do we go about taking some level of, um, I wouldn't control. say control, would it be yeah. control? Yeah. yeah. Authority so, back. Yeah. Um, we got to talk to one another. Um, we've got to start moving as a unit. I think um, with men, we have to first and foremost accept that these are the things that are working against us. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because some men, they don't accept it and they go into this emotional hole where it's like, I'm just going to work. And as long as I'm hard working, it's going to provide and do all the things that it needs to do. But really and truly, yeah. it doesn't matter, you know, um, if you're not aware of what's really going on. So, for example, um, there's a lot of videos I see on TikTok about parents complaining about, you know, their children going to school and the schools come and told them they can't wear their hair this way. Or there's like, issues with religion or you know you're getting stopped to search inappropriately and you know with those sort of situations there my thing is this it's like why are we but there's a lot of responsibility that we're pushing on other people when it comes to our children and raising them and i feel like as fathers one thing we're very good at is duty first so raising um children together with other families sometimes it doesn't always have to be families but other strong masculine and feminine principles around us would help these situations a lot more and then we can actually homeschool and do our own thing i i, I solely believe in community building that's just me um, naturally i've got a um a secure family unit outside of me like, in terms of like my blood and stuff like that that um you know my son knows very well and you know we're all connected in such a way where we do things together i think also as well we have to really start researching and being aware of um all the external things that could be influencing our ch- our children and our family so for example like if you're a single man now between the age of they say 21 to 35 and you're not in a relationship you haven't got any kids the best thing for you to do is you know work out train uh, have a real vision or a goal. It could doesn't have to be anything crazy like Elon Musk or whatever. It could just be something small. But work towards that first. Because what a lot of men were doing is at some point just getting into a relationship or getting into situations where they thought that that would bring them happiness or peace of mind. But essentially they they never had transitioned into providing or living by themselves. You know, I think when you are going through those sort of experiences, it will help build a stronger mindset. But anyway, working with, in terms of like, those sort of things, I feel like 
we really really need to pull together like and as a community more as men and if you're struggling to you know talk you know therapy is not that bad i've done it before i feel like we need to have more outlets of pushing out our stresses and our emotions because it it's building up with inside us and it's obviously creating too much of this um decision making that we're seeing and obviously this is where we are right now so i feel um we have to be very very on point with what's going on what you're feeding your children you know for, uh, um, on the internet you know dietary wise in terms of food and mentality as well try and keep them focused you know i would say these are the things you need to kind of do during this point in time otherwise you're going to end up losing them you know mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not always right when they're you know in some situations where you see that the children may be under social services or they may be with the mother and the mother is not really interested in looking after them but we've also got to go down to the root of that how did you get there you know um, us as older men will have to tell the younger men look you know stay on your path do x y and z you know but be vigilant of what you're doing don't be blind and sort of dumb yourself down into not wanting to know these things but yeah yeah. Very wholesome, yeah. very very wholesome mm -hmm. answer. So interesting. So you know, what I, I, I've, got, I've got a I've got a question for you. So mm -hmm. you know, we, you, you talk about legacy. You spoke about you know you're here just for a moment, like you know the possessions and stuff come and go. But you as a father, you know, for the next generation, what is your mindset on? Like, what are the main things on your mind to instill? to ensure that your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren are in a place that they know who they are, who they know their land. You spoke about having a strong co connection with, with blood. What, is that, what does that investment look like? I think um, for my great-grandkids, I think I would want them to understand that you don't need to struggle. Um, you can actually live. You know, there is a difference between um, just working hard like i said again for labor versus working hard for your actual self or building for yourself so i would definitely like to leave behind more understanding on that, that aspect of life you know don't um when it comes to decision making and stuff that you do you gotta understand that why are you doing these things you know why are you if i look at if i look at a lot of the things that i bought when i first got a bit of money and stuff like that it was all pointless you know, it was all silly. And I had to ask myself, why did I buy these things? It's because of the opinions of other people. So I would want to teach my kids to have that self-esteem from such a very, very young age. You know, I've seen how it can go wrong where, you know, parents are favoring children based upon that circumstance at the time. You know, that the last born may have been the easiest because obviously they've had three more prior to that. So the last one's getting all the toys and all the attention and whatnot whereas the, the first one may have not have got that based upon their situation and then the middle child might have so i feel like i need to teach my kids definitely socially how to interact and survive um so i would say and live in, in in this world and also bloodline is very important in terms of i wouldn't say blood that runs through your veins but i would say blood that you know you end up um i would say shedding or spinning when it comes to grinding for what you want so there could be people that you could build with and um, foundation is really important. So I would want my children to understand that um, there isn't just one way to make money. There's multiple ways. There isn't one way to learn and have knowledge. There's multiple ways, you know. Um, legacy doesn't have to always be fame. You know, learn how to really manage your ego. Um, and remember that it's, it's read the actions of people versus what they say. That way you'll be able to determine, you know, who you're dealing with. But I would definitely want them to have that, that kind of discernment, I would say. But yeah. Cool. I love that. I love it. It's the sense of grounding, you know, that when you have that sense of grounding, regardless of where you find yourself in this world, you'll survive, you will adapt, you will make it work. You don't focus on the validation of people on the outside. It's all about what you're doing with your situation and where you are at that particular moment in time. And I love what you said about ego because there's so much that's been fed into the egos of young men that's today. Right. And that is, yeah, it's, 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 that's mm -hmm. it. It's a foundation for you to crumble. So, you know, 
yeah, it's second to none, it's paramount. Everything that you said, we can't take away or add to any of that. And just that is legacy. That is generational wealth in itself. It doesn't have to be fame, not necessarily liquid assets, but or liquid cash, should I say. But just having that self-understanding, self-belief and just pushing, persevering, moving forward. It's just doesn't matter how many times you fall, you'll get back up and you'll make a difference. So I think as there's a couple of people that left some comments. They were loving what you were saying. Queen Duncan said, find your passion and work on it and let go of fear. Um, we spoke a bit about fear earlier on. Mm. Um, and said again, build on a strong, build on strong self-esteem, their well-being, less focusing on the things of this world. I mean, I'm guessing those are the material things of this world. As, as you said before, Jess, those things come and go. But mm. hey-ho, you know, it's the substance that the substance of a man that remains and, and that's what would allow him to stand for a, a very long time and intuitively improvised said true legacy is an internal very true indeed exactly and yeah. you know that, that's what leads me on to um some of the things we're touching on so you know with the afro parenting village and destination africa we're all about legacies we're all about investing we're all about you know having conversations and sharpening mindsets you know they say iron sharpens iron and it's about you know taking from others in the community sharing and just having that space where you know we can grow together as a village and impart that knowledge on the younger ones in our community coming up because they are the learners of today and they will be the leaders of tomorrow as a um, chi proverb which translates and says you know you look after me as my teeth cut through my gums and I'll take care of you when your teeth are falling out so we have to lay that purposeful foundation so that they have the school they are equipped with the skills and the tools to do that and at Destination Africa we have set up the Destination Africa Academy which is an online on-demand service designed to help you raise your children to share so much with them a holistic education around some of the essential things in life as afro children growing up in the world um, have a global community around to support them so guys if you're interested in finding out more dm the destination africa instagram account dm da academy to us and then we'll send you some information about how you can get involved in the academy so you know if you enjoy this conversation with Ja, the creator Guys, drop us some fire because we, we, you know, we've gone deep. So right now we're going to go even deeper. We're going to test out his knowledge on the African continent because you know they say Africa is the future, and it's it, it sure it's time is. so we test to see Jar's knowledge. So you know, as part of this in Africa, we say you know the children and the families need to know about the African continent because it's the future. Fifty-four countries, and we're going to see from these handful of flags we have here. How much jar the creator knows. And again, if you if you mess up, you know, you can also answer Destination Africa Academy. We've got a country back <laughs> five. And the flag game available. Hey, it's, oh, it, it's is, is, is that yeah, sweat on your brow? Cool. I see my <laughs> No, it's the it's the lighting. It's the lighting. <laughs> okay, guys. So in the chat, you guys are going up against Jar the Creator. I want you guys to put in the chat the flag of the country, okay? So if you can get there before Ja, you get the point, and uh, good things will happen. So the first flag, take it away. Uh, Egypt. Hey, one to Ja. Yeah, hey. Okay, yeah. Well done. Well, well, hey, hey, you guys at home. Are you sleeping? Pasta on the fingers, please. <laughs> flag number two. Let's go. Go for it, John. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse, I don't know. Jesse. Oh, Jesse, right. Israel? Ah! It's Israel in Africa. Uncle, you have failed. Um, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. Okay, guys, in the comment section, yeah. are you going to get this one? Come on. Oh, in five, four, three, two. Let me I don't know. Hey, someone got it. Somebody oh. got it. In the chat, Somalia. Nefertari wow. says Somalia. Wow. So Nefertari, you want to hurt our neck? Or oh, I don't know if it's a he or one for one. Neck and neck. Oh wow. Flag number three. Let's. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Uh, come on, Jess. Uh, Elevator. Um, not oh, Tanzania. Tanzania. No, guess again. Zimbabwe. Say that again. Zimbabwe. No, guess again. Malawi. No. Mozambique. I knew it was one of them. I that knew it was one of them. You come around the room so there's no fucking time. My answer is, see? Okay, we really need you, bro. Okay. okay, okay, let's go. All right, flag number four. Is it flag number four? You know what? Home educator says we set we set them up to we set them up to fail. Can you? That's what you say when you don't know the flag. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know the flag is winning. You're winning. Yeah. Okay, four flag. Let's go. Is this America? No, come on now. You know, you know, are really oh, in oh, Africa. Can you in Africa, ridiculous. Um, Djibouti. Djibouti, no. Uh, um, oh, Sherelle, do this. Ooh. Hey. Okay, hey. Sherelle just, just googled Liberia. Yes. Oh my goodness. Fake educator. Uh, sorry, home educator. She said fake America. That, that's what right. I'm saying. But you know, that's the point. That, <laughs> I'm saying that. There's, there's, there's yeah. a history to it. There's a colonization. I'm so yeah. sorry. Okay, yeah. this one goes to Sherelle. Sherelle. Okay, so one to Sherelle. The final flag, the final one. It's the final one. Let's go. Come on, guys. Oh, uh, guys. Um, not Uganda. It's um, Burundi. Not Burundi. Uh, what flag is this one again? I know this one, man. Rwanda. Oh my goodness. Sherelle said Marcus Garvey. Sherelle, why are you We have a winner. Nefrotari uh, <laughs> says it is Malawi. Uh, and I said that earlier as well. Look at that. I said that earlier as well. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, with one point. Actually, do you know what? With half a point, because she, because Sherelle said this flag is Marcus Garvey, with half a point, it's Sherelle with Liberia. Woohoo! Okay, home educator has one point for saying Liberia is fake America. Let's go for hair. <laughs> okay, the Fatari comes in. With two points, she got Somalia and she got Malawi. Give it up for Nefertari. Okay, and <clears throat> what do you call this one? It's a draw. Ja gets two. Egypt and Mozambique. So Nefertari and Ja the Creator. It's a draw. You guys are winners tonight. Well done. Well done. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Clap for you yourself. Guys need to get Okay. It's the best thing when, like, we're family. So yes, yes, yes. Purchase your flags, game. Listen, we need to support each other in every mm -hmm. single way possible. And you know, I also it's a fun way to learn about the flags of Africa and also to inspire the next generation. You now, if they know about the continent, they're just there. They're dropping knowledge all Absolutely. the time. So it's a great game. Check it out. You can have access to it from our website. Yep. So guys, yeah, that's the confidence. Mm. So wow, this has been an amazing conversation. I want to know before we go, Ja, Jesse, Jesse, what's your Ghanaian name? Nanayao. Nanayao. I will never call you Jesse. Jesse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a whole king. A whole king. Okay, Nana. The question is, how do you want to be remembered as a father? Um, I think a father that um that just loved and tried his best you know i would say um respected we ultimately i would say respected um i think that that's the only thing i could see um in, in generation from generation that keeps the family in check and that's respect you know wow. so yeah i yeah. think yeah. respected is what i would like to say yeah I love that. 
I absolutely love that. Your son is short and sweet. Short and sweet. sweet. Short and sweet. It's going to stay in here for a very, very long time. Mm. <laughs> Are there any last words that you want to leave fathers out there just to encourage them as well, Jess? Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, like I said earlier, um, hang in there. Reach out to other men. You know, uh, don't feel don't feel the need to um, you know. I would say put a front. The front doesn't work. You can front what you want, but it, you know, either the system catches up with you or cancer or some illness because again, you're you're not facing your issues in it. Um, do try and find ways to maintain you know a good level with your ego and your heart because I think when they're in line obviously with your mind as well, you make better decisions. Try not to make too much emotional decisions and start um, learning from people that operate on an area of logic. You know, there's a lot of people on YouTube. Um, Jordan, Peters, Jordan, Jordan Peterson, I would say. Um, people like uh, even 19 Keys, I would say they're very good role models as men. Um, fathers as well, I would point to. There's loads of different people. But yeah, I would just say learn. Um, keep fit, stay on your goals, and um, yeah, yeah, man, just know that for as long as you do what you're required for as a man, then you know it's going to work out for you. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing, guys. We have enjoyed this. This live has been so special. I need you all to just pop in the comment section. Just what you thought of the live, you know, what you thought of what Jesse had to bring our community to the table today, because we need to hear it. And, you know, he needs to hear it because I, I think personally you have done an amazing job. So please, guys, get in that comment section. Let him know. Let us know. And whilst you're doing that, Jess, lastly, can I ask him one last question? Hey, you ask away. Okay. Jess, how can we as, as women of... of uh, your women, how do we help? Yes, yes, yes. Is it step proof? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, um, I would say for women, um, listen to men, listen to their faults, listen to their cries, listen to their decision making and just I would say you know allow you know don't be afraid to let a man lead you know to start consuming ideas of what you want say what you need in life versus what you want some people want a marriage they want a house kids all that kind of stuff but what do you know that requires of you to maintain that you know do you even know how to maintain that anyone could get a man but can you keep one, you know? So that's the, I would say, listen to men first and foremost and um, try your best to, even if the emotions are crazy, try your best to deal with a logic understanding and that way you get to know. Wow. Wow. I have taken mental notes. The knife will not be coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let me check one sec. Hold on. No, no, that's not it. <laughs> oh, man, that what is amazing. And you know, like I said, it's, it's always good to share and, and just to put it out there. I think, you know, for many a time, we're in our circles, in our spaces, but it's good to have that conversation, you know, amongst others in that space. And I always say, you know, we are in that peak day sun, you know, the time when we were children and all our parents, parents made decisions for us, what we wore, what we ate, you know, what school we went to, who we're allowed to hang about with, what mm. lawyer, accountant, or dentist we will be. But now we're in the midday sun and we have children. And it's for us to make decisions on their behalf. And, you know, we must as you say, you know, put ourselves in that, in that box, for allow ourselves to be cross-examined, you know, and make sure our motives are pure and our actions intent and, and results are as well. So, um, you know, it's never perfect. And it's always work in progress. So thank you for sharing what you've shared. Um, a comment from Home Educator 23. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. You have taught me so much. So, hey, you know what? As I say, each one teach one. And you know what? Let, let's do that. Let's keep having these conversations.
keep sharing and keep lifting and empowering the village. So, Ja, a massive thank you to you for, for sharing your heart and your time and your mind. Definitely. Well done for winning the Flores game. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was sweating there, boy. Yeah, not at the I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to research that Somalia and Liberia thing now. Watch. Yeah, I'm thinking, get what the kind of... thing. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I know blue and white. Yeah. What happened to red, yellow, green, and all yeah. of that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. with a trick. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, we are gonna sign off, um, and you know we, we need we need to show you the, the destination Africa sign off. So, it's signature sign off. Two taps on the shoulder, finger wave. You know, some people like to do it wide, some people like to do it slow, some people like to do it fast, and some people like to do it slow. So, you pick your chat, kick it back, cock it back, and bring it to the camera. And we sign up. So that's a practice. And now we're going to do it for real. But when you're bringing it forward, you have to say a true, which means goodbye. All right. Okay. So are you ready? Yeah. You're good to go? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So two taps on the shoulder, finger wave, cock your back. For all the guys in the live, a true. Yeah.